Time now for Spry's double feature treat of the day. Aunt Jenny's thrilling real life story. And tender Spry oatmeal muffins. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Spry Time here in Aunt Jenny's kitchen. And it's leftover Monday again, isn't it, Aunt Jenny? Right, Danny. I've assembled what's left over from our Sunday dinner. And with delicious, nourishing Spry oatmeal muffins, there'll be just enough. Land sakes, how good hot bread does fill out of me. Oh, you bet. And how light, tender, golden Spry hot breads do round out enjoyment and add energy to a meal, too. Now, folks, try Aunt Jenny's Swell Spry Oatmeal Muffins. You'll find them extra easy to make with soft, creamy spry. Ladies, that's because it's not necessary to melt spry. Just cut it in, and you'll be delighted how quickly amazing spry blends with your other ingredients. Why, you'd say muffins made with pure all-vegetable spry are extra delicate in flavor, too. You get all the good, nut-like flavor of the rolled oats and never the slightest off-flavor... Because Spry's the shortening that's tops in purity and blandness. And in these days when every ounce of food is so urgently needed, we can't afford expensive, wasteful failures. So, ladies, rely on Spry and be sure that every bit of food you bake or fry will be eaten and enjoyed. Right. Now, folks, be listening after the story for Aunt Jenny's tip on making delicious Spry oatmeal muffins. They're swell for breakfast and plenty good as a dessert bread. Well, Aunt Jenny... We've already heard how Eric Gibson, the famous illustrator and painter, had discovered a strange shadow in the eyes of innocent, sheltered Lynn Cotter while painting her portrait for a magazine cover. And Lynn had confessed that her Aunt Matilda had told her that her father had died insane. And it was a great blow to Eric, because Lynn refused to marry him after what she'd learned. And Eric, deeply in love with Lynn, had decided to find out if Matilda Cotter had told the truth. He traced Lynn's father back to the nursing home where he had died ten years ago. One more step up that fence and I'll blast your leg off. I've got to see Matilda Cotter. You hear me? Put that gun down, Joe. You can't threaten me. You're trespassing. You've seen the sign, now get. I warn you, put that gun down. And I'm warning you, young fella, you get and get fast. Or by thunder, I'll fix you so you can't get. All right, I'll go. But I'll be back with the authorities. Dirty troublemaker. If I never let you set foot in the place, we'd had no misery. Now look, Jode. I don't know what part you're playing in all this. But I'm telling you now, it's getting dangerous. Because I know the whole story. And I'm going to tell Lynn. And nothing's going to stop me. She's been told. And you broke her heart because of the likes of you. Now get my fingers getting mighty itchy. Lynn's been told a lie, Jode. I found out the truth last night in Metropole. Why, you... Oh, no, you You don't. I told you not to raise that gun. Now, get up. I'll get you for this if I die trying. I said get up. Now, you get back up to the farm and tell Miss Matilda that I went to the Hampton Nursing Home last night and I know the real cause of Frederick Cotter's death. I'm not going to enter here illegally now. But you tell her I'll be back, and soon. What you hinting at? You know what I'm talking about. No, wait. Come back here. I tell you, I want no. I drove straight to the office of Sheriff Ezra Law and told him the whole story. He couldn't help me, but he did tell me that Dr. Allen was the only person Matilda Cotter ever spoke to. Well... About an hour later, I was driving back to Hill Farm with Dr. Allen beside me. The man who held the last piece to the puzzle. Mr. Gibson, come quick. Something's happened to Matilda. Where is she, Joe? She's in the house. She started carrying on something fierce when I told her she was telling me about the nursing place. Come on, Dr. Allen. Miss Carter. Miss Carter, where are you? The living room. Miss Carter. Miss Cotter, you're going to talk to me whether you like it or not. What do you want? 
Lynn is here. You know me, Miss Carter. I am Dr. Allen. I treated you for migraine headaches a few months ago. What do you want? Uh, this boy came to me with a story that has to be cleared up. And I happen to know some of the facts, Miss Carter. Yes. Miss Carter, why did you tell Lynn her father died of insanity? I, I don't... Now, I want the truth, Miss Carter. You see, I found out last night that he died of tuberculosis. I... Oh, please. I think I can tell you, Miss Carter. When you came to me, you asked me if migraine headaches were hereditary, didn't you? Yes. And I told you that in some instances, there was an inherited tendency toward a nerve weakness that brought them on. Yes, you did. And you wanted to know if they were a sign of approaching insanity. Yes. Yes, I did, and they are. I know it. But I told you they were not. I didn't believe you. I still don't. All your life, you've had a deep fear of insanity because of those headaches. Haven't you? Yes, sir. Sometimes I'm sure I'm going insane when they get bad. Seems I can't stand them another minute. What has that got to do with Lynn? I was trying to protect her. Do you still maintain that her father was insane? No, he wasn't. That's all I wanted to know. Where's Lynn? I'm going to tell her the truth. Wait. Wait. Let me tell her, please. If she ever finds out what I did, she'll hate me for the rest of her life. I'd lose her forever. I've been wrong. And I want to repair the damage I've done to Lynn if I can. What do you think, Dr. Allen? I think uh, it would be best for Miss Carter to tell her it was all a mistake. Now, if all you've told me of Lynn's innocence is true, she shouldn't have her faith shattered in her aunt. Now, you understand, Miss Carter... This is not for your sake, but for your niece. Yes, I know. I don't deserve to be let off so lightly. But, Mr. Gibson, I swear to you I did it because I loved her. Not for any other reason. I wanted only to shelter her from harm. If you can convince Lynn, Miss Carter, that it was all a mistake, I'll never tell her the truth. Can I see her sometime after she's gone? Why, of course. I don't hate you, Miss Carter, because you've really loved her. I know that. I love her, too, and she loves us both. Between Lynn and I, we'll try to keep you from being too lonely. Oh, thank you. Thank you for understanding, and oh, thank you for helping me, Dr. Allen. You've lifted a great fear from my heart. Well, I could have done it months ago if you'd been honest with me. Will you... Wait outside while I tell him. Now, now, Eric, I tell you, nothing's going to happen to that girl. Not now. But I'm afraid for her, Doctor. What if her aunt tells her another lie? Oh, you're all off, my boy. Matilda Carter didn't know she was lying. To herself, she thought she was telling the truth. Because Matilda Carter for years has feared insanity and believed she would go insane from those headaches. So she thought she was only juggling the truth a little in what she told Lynn. Dr. Allen, is there any chance that Matilda Carter might go insane? Oh, no, 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 Eric. Uh, that's just a fear a great many people have when they're emotionally overwrought. Oh, poor old woman. I can't help feeling sorry for her. Sounds almost like battle fatigue. Mm, there are many kinds of battles, my boy. Many kinds. Eric? <clears throat> I reckon that's my cue to go sit in the car. Lynn. Lynn, darling. Eric. And Matilda told me. I'm free. There was nothing at all wrong with my father. No, darling. Oh, it's like my dream. Like my little girl dream all come true. Just like like Daddy said it would. In my dream, too, Lynn. Look at me, darling. Your eyes are as clear as crystal again. That shadow's gone. Can you finish painting the picture now, Eric? Yes, darling. And then you'll take me away? Yes. Yeah. But I'm afraid that it won't be like your dream. My white horse is a jeep. And my castle is... Well, maybe a little home here in Littleton. 
where we can be close to the country and sky and trees. And I can come see Aunt Matilda and Jode. Poor old Jode. Why poor old Jode? I thought you were afraid of him. Not anymore. That night that Aunt Matilda told me about my father, he was out on the back steps, crying, because I had to be told. Jode crying? He told me that that my father was the kindest man he'd ever known. At last, you're friends with the fox. Well, I guess you know the rest of my story, Aunt Jenny. Yes, indeed, Eric. It created quite a sensation when the folks in Littleton heard of you and Lynn Cotter being married, and then her picture coming out in the Easter cover of the Ladies' Review magazine. Well, Aunt Jenny, I've certainly enjoyed visiting you and Calvin this evening, and I want to thank you for listening to my story. Mm -hmm. i better run along now and pick up my wife. She's out visiting her Aunt Matilda and Joe. <laughs> Well, Aunt Jenny, I don't think I've ever heard a more thrilling love story. And I feel mighty lucky in having those two wonderful people so close. Because Liv and Eric Gibson are living just two doors from me. Right here on Indian Hill in Littleton. Well, now, Aunt Jenny, how about those tempting spry oatmeal muffins? Well, they are wonderfully delicious. And ladies, they help save precious wheat flour. Now, to make them, just use your favorite oatmeal muffin recipe. And to give the muffins an extra good nut-like flavor, toast the rolled oats in a moderate oven about ten minutes before mixing. Folks, try a batch and see how temptingly tender and delicate muffins are when they're made the spry way. Say, every crumb will be eaten with relish and never a bit wasted. Yes, that's right, ladies. And we must avoid waste. You know, it's a startling thing to know that the bread wasted in our country would actually give two and a half million starving people in Europe and Asia three-fourths of a pound of bread a day. But delicious hot breads made the spry way never go begging. So, folks, don't take chances on food-wasting failures in any of your baking and frying. A tested spry recipe and new spry give you the magic combination for success in all your cooking. Look for tested recipes for delectable hot breads, pies, cakes, and fried foods on the Spry labels. Try those recipes and see if your cooking doesn't bring you praise and compliments galore. And ladies, if your grocer can't supply you with Spry the first time you ask, we're sure you'll ask again. Remember, no other type of shortening gives you Spry's magic cake improver secret. It's a bonus for all you bake and fry Rely on Spry. And now, Aunt Jenny, have you a golden thought for today? Yes, Danny. Calvin read these lines to me last night. To look fearlessly upon life. To accept the laws of nature not with meek resignation, but as her sons who dare to search and question. To have peace and confidence within our souls. These are the beliefs that make for happiness. Splendid, Aunt Jenny. Folks, we'll be expecting you back with us tomorrow for Spry's Double Feature Treat of the Day. Aunt Jenny's thrilling real-life story. And a grand treat for lunch or supper, salmon or tuna in Spry cream sauce on hard rolls. How long do your stockings last? Use Lux to keep them lovely twice as long. Strong soap or cake soap rubbing weakens elasticity, invites runs. With Lux Care, stockings don't pop into runs nearly so quickly. Last twice as long, strain tests show. If your dealer's out of Lux, try again soon. Lux cuts down needless runs. This is Dan Seymour again, inviting you to join us tomorrow for Aunt Jenny's thrilling real-life story, brought to you by Spry, sensational new Spry with cake improver. Rely on Spry. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>